<laughs> How many of you are familiar with the, the Japanese American incarceration? Oh, thank you and good night. <laughs> Ah, ah, you guys are wonderful. I was a prisoner of war during World War II, held by my own country. I was six years old. This is my prison number, 12524. Two, 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 I'm the letter D. The family had 12524. My family and I were incarcerated for three and a half years in Poston, Arizona during World War II. As a teacher, I would ask my students, sometimes on the first day of school, uh, draw an American for me. Okay, take out a piece of paper and, and draw an American for me. Okay? And then I would go around the room and uh, check the drawings and sometimes uh, the drawings would be of a stick figure, okay? Not much better than kindergarten. Excuse me, Marcia, okay? But my, Marcia is a kindergarten teacher, and my, my wife. Draw an American for me. You got somebody in mind? Hmm? You know? How many of you, okay, thought of drawing a woman? Thank you. A majority of Americans are women. Who says it's a man's world? Men. <laughs> women can do everything a man can do, and more. How many of you thought of drawing a blonde, blue-eyed hunk of a guy? Uh, Hitler would have been so proud of you. <laughs> mm. To many Americans, WASP is the American, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. If you're not white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you're not really an American. You know? you know, I'm not Japanese. I've never been Japanese. I'm an American of Japanese ancestry. My father was Japanese, my mother was Japanese, but I'm not Japanese. <laughs> when I go to Japan and I speak, uh, <laughs> They laugh and they go, oh, we don't talk like that anymore. <laughs> they know I'm a gaijin, a foreigner. When I was in London shopping and I had a nice conversation with the sales lady, and at the end she says, oh, you Yanks. She's looking at me, and I'm a Yank. <laughs> but in this country, in parts of this country, I'm a damn Jap. And I don't mean just the South. There are parts of uh, Idaho, Montana, and North Dakota and such. It's, it's kind of dangerous for me to travel. Hmm. Racism still prevails in this country. After 9-11, the attack on the Twin Towers in New York, there was talk about rounding up all the Arabs and Muslim Americans in this country and incarcerating them in concentration camps. Now, to his credit, George W. Bush, the president, he called the cabinet meeting, and he told his cabinet members, we're not going to do to the Arab and Muslim Americans in this country what we did to Norm Mineta and his family. And all talk about rounding up Arab and Muslims stopped. And we were grateful. Now, why was Norm, his family, and 120,000 Japanese and Japanese Americans, two thirds were American citizens, from Washington, Oregon, and California, incarcerated after the attack on Pearl Harbor? Well, Cabrillo College instructor, uh, Sandy Leiden, historian emeritus, said the Japanese strawberry farmer of Watsonville had nothing to do with the attack on Pearl Harbor. Did you know that there were 158,000 Japanese and Japanese Americans living in the territory of Hawaii? It wasn't a state yet. Who were not incarcerated with 
the exception of about 2,000. They're in the war zone. Well, they needed the Japanese and Japanese Americans in Hawaii to run the economy of Hawaii. They were the plurality. They were 37% of the population. The census was taken in 1940. Their General Edmund said, it's not necessary to do this. There's no plans for sabotage. We who were 2,500 miles away from the war zone, we get incarcerated. Why? I have to take you back a little bit in American history. The United States Constitution legalized slavery. The US government condoned and practiced racism. The Naturalization Act of 1790, Asians cannot become citizens of the United States. The Cherokee Nation, you've heard of the Trail of Tears? They were forced out of their homes. Dred Scott decision, he was a slave, even free territory. Their anti-Irish Catholic mentality in this country. There were signs that were printed and displayed, no Irish need apply. Hmm. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. Plessy versus Ferguson, separate but equal. How can the separate be equal? A. Mitchell Palmer raids, 1919-1920, were communists and and Jews, too, were deported without trial, just placed on the ship and shipped out. Immigration Act of 1924. Japanese could not come to this country anymore. Fred Korematsu case. Our history is a history of racism discrimination regarding immigration as well. In the early 20th century, it was said in the newspapers, the Examiner, the Chronicle, the McClatchy papers, you know, Sacramento Bee, Fresno Bee, and the Sentinel, that the Japanese race is an alien race which can never be assimilated into the American way of life. There's nothing of value of Japanese culture. Hmm. Nothing of value. How many have eaten sushi? <laughs> oh, yeah, sushi's good for you. What about bonsai? Ikebana flower arranging? Origami? Wax on, wax off. <laughs> Karate? Ah, Japanese culture is rich, and so many enjoy participating in Japanese culture. To make sure the Japanese did not assimilate into this country, laws were passed. Asians could not own property, marry whites, become citizens of the United States. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941, John L. DeWitt, commander of the Western, uh, well, it was, it was Fourth Army, the Presidio of San Francisco, had the ear of the President of the United States. He said, a Jap's a Jap. It makes no difference whether that Jap is a citizen or not. Jedgar Hoover said, Mr. President, we don't need to do this. Francis Biddle, who was the Attorney General at the time, said, Mr. President, I don't think we, we can do this. There were no Lawsuits filed on our behalf. Executive Order 9066 was passed 75 years ago. You know, there was one group nationally, one group that supported us, the American Quakers, the American Friends. They're the only ones. Nationally, not even the ACLU supported us. Locally, 
luckily, we had some friends. City Attorney of Watsonville, John McCarthy. Our police chief, Matt Graves, school teacher, public school teachers, and many others supported us. You know, the reward, they were called Jap lovers for supporting us. They had their homes and cars vandalized. And they were among the very first to welcome us back. We had some very dear friends. In 1942, our homes were searched without search warrants. The FBI came into our homes. They got the information from the Bureau of the Census. The Bureau of the Census is not supposed to do that. We were hacked. There were no trials except for four people. But for the rest of us, we had no charges, no attorneys, no due process of law. This, the Constitution of the United States, ceased to exist for us. From camp, there were 10 major camps. And from camps, our men and women volunteered to serve in the United States Armed Forces. The men, many of them were in the 142nd Regimental Combat Team, the most decorated army unit for its size and length of service. My two brothers were in the MIS, Military Intelligence Service, because they could read and write Japanese. They went to Japanese school after high school each day. They fought against the Japanese. We use the Japanese language as a weapon against the Japanese. The MIS stayed after the war with the restoration, occupation restoration of Japan. Their service during the war saved countless American and Japanese lives. It is estimated that it shortened the war by two years. Congress formally acknowledged the work of the 100 full 42nd and MIS with a congressional gold medal. And we're grateful. Our forced removal was illegal, right? No. No. It's legal. The government of the United States can evict anyone from their homes if under the guise of military necessity. <laughs> Today, we won't use that term. We'll use the term national security. Congress and the president apologized for our wartime experience. Civil Liberties Act was passed on August 10th, 1988. We have an official apology. You know, of the 120,000, the government expected 60,000 to have died and 60,000 were still alive. But we fooled them. 80,000 of us were still alive. You see, sushi is good for you. <laughs> There's only one race, that's the human race. There are those who wish to classify us, you know, oh, you're Caucasian American, you're Asian American, you're Hispanic American, or black American. There's only one race. You know, dogs? Now we call them German Shepherd and French Poodles and Chihuahuas, whatever. They go to anybody, huh? Right? They're colorblind. I wish humans were colorblind. 
Today, the present administration is constantly issuing new executive orders and policies regarding immigration, contrary to the spirit of America. Fortunately, now, we have the Southern Poverty Law Center, the American Civil Liberties Union. We have so many groups and individuals supporting what really is of true America, something we didn't see in 1942. Will it happen again? Memory is short. No, not under the guise of military necessity. So who's the biggest threat? Some suspect it would be the reporters and producers of fake news. <laughs> it doesn't have to be an individual or group, okay, a national group, a racial group. It could be an occupation. The days of Walter Cronkite, the conscious of America, are long gone. Now we have the internet, radio talk show hosts, TV commentators, I'm grateful to be living here in Santa Cruz County, the second most liberal county in the nation. You know, if, if you know the history of Santa Cruz City, it wasn't always that way. Yeah, minorities were not welcomed in Santa Cruz. Growing up, I didn't come to Santa Cruz very often. But that all changed. How? thanks to Cabrillo College and the University of Santa Cruz, University of California at Santa Cruz. The intelligentsia came, and it changed our whole county. Today, this is the most wonderful place in the whole world to live, and I kid you not. Gordon Hirabashi, he was a student at the University of Washington, a Quaker, he was arrested, convicted, imprisoned. The prosecuting attorneys lied to the judges. Yeah, he spent some time. Now, his conviction was vacated, not overturned, vacated. Gordon Hirabashi she said, ancestry is not a crime. Today, we would add, Islam is not a crime. With our newfound energy, we have a lot of work to do. You know, there was a, a gentleman who lived not too far from Charlottesville, Virginia, at a place called Monticello, Thomas Jefferson. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. It's up to us, all of us, to work in peace and harmony, compassion, to overcome hate and bigotry, and we can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.